Good evening, and welcome to the Capital Projects Public Hearing. My name is Sophia LaFrance Brooks, and I am the hearing officer for tonight's public hearing. This hearing provides the public with the opportunity to commit to comment on the proposed list of projects. For the record, today is February 8th, 2022, and the time is 6 p.m. This public hearing is being live casted and recorded and will be available publicly on the MTA YouTube channel. By attending this hybrid webinar, you are consenting to be recorded. Today's public hearing will begin with opening remarks followed by public comments. Only those who signed up to speak in person or virtually will be able to give comments. If you have joined the Zoom under a name that is different from the one you use when you signed up to speak, please identify yourself in the Q&A function with this name you use when you signed up. We will now start with introductory comments from Catherine Corliss. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Catherine Corliss, and I'm the Deputy Director of Grants Management for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. I would like to welcome you to the Capital Projects Public Hearing for Federal Fiscal Year 2022. I will begin this public hearing by reading a prepared statement which will become part of this hearing's public record. I would like to note that a transcript of this hearing will be made and a copy will be supplied to each MTA board member. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we are conducting this hearing in a hybrid format, both in person and virtually via Zoom and conference call feature with a live stream available through the website new.mta.info slash 2022 Capital Projects Hearing. This hearing is an opportunity for the members of the public to comment on the proposals. Representatives of the MTA are here to listen, so representatives will be listening, not commenting. The panelists for tonight are Jillian Prasad for MTA Bus Company, Gregory Jack for Long Island Railroad, Ziona Rubin for Metro North Railroad, Peter Crociata for New York City Transit, James Wardle for MTA Construction and Development Company, and also on the panel tonight is Sophia LaFrance Brooks, who is our hearing officer. I should emphasize public comments, including spoken comments today. All correspondence and emails will be transcribed and incorporated into the official record and distributed to every board member. Language interpreter and American Sign Language services have been offered in the notice for this hearing upon advance request. No request for these language services was made by the deadline for this hearing. The MTA has conducted a community involvement and public information effort to encourage customer comment at this hearing. To make the public aware of this hearing, advertisements were published in eight print media outlets, multilingual posters, digital and social media assets. Notice of this hearing was also posted on the MTA website site, along with multilingual translations. This is a public hearing being held by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, or MTA, in connection with requests to the United States Department of Transportation for federal financial assistance under the Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, known as the FAST Act, for federal fiscal year 2021, and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law beginning in federal fiscal year 2022. This federal assistance is for capital improvement projects for the systems operated by MTA New York City Transit, Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transit Operating Authority, Staten Island Railway, MTA Long Island Railroad, MTA Metro North Railroad, MTA Bus Company, and for the MTA Construction and Development Company. Copies of the description of projects from which specific requests for federal financial assistance will be selected have been made available for inspection at numerous public locations throughout the service area. In addition, copies of these documents were also available on the MTA website since January 3rd, 2022. At this hearing, an opportunity will be afforded to all persons and agencies interested in being heard with respect to the social, economic, environmental, and historic preservation impact of the projects and to submit evidence and recommendations orally or in writing with respect to any aspect of this list of projects. Today's hearing is being held in accordance with federal requirements in order to qualify the projects for federal financial assistance. We are here today to seek comments on the proposed list of projects only. 
The projects in this hearing may be more than we ultimately seek funding for, and the MTA may or may not do any of the projects listed here with federal funds. The published list of projects contains capital improvement work in the following amounts for each agency. New York City Transit, including Staten Island Railway, $7,887,000,000. Long Island Railroad, $761,000,000. Metro North Railroad, $2,592,000,000. MTA Bus, $173,000,000. Capital construction slash network expansion, $1,249,000,000. The total for the MTA is $12,662,000,000. Anyone interested in the categories of work which are the subject of today's public hearing or the details on the individual projects can inspect copies of the description of projects which are available on the MTA's website. Section 5307 is a formula-based program from which a specified amount of federal funds is allocated to the urbanized area for each federal fiscal year. The MTA will make the final program of projects available on its website, new.mta.info slash transparency slash grant management for Section 5307 funded projects when the FTA awards Section 5307 grants. In federal fiscal year 2020, MTA was available to, uh, to receive, was eligible, excuse me, to receive $684.2 million of Section 5307 funds for New York City Transit, Manhattan and Bronx Surface Transfer, uh, Transit Operating Authority, Long Island Railroad, Metro North Railroad, and MTA bus projects. MTA will be submitting applications to obtain federal financial assistance from various sections of the FAST Act legislation and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Amounts that will be received for federal fiscal year 2021 and federal fiscal year 2022 are not presently known. The requests to be made for federal financial assistance will incorporate individual projects into programs of work and will be submitted as appropriate following this public hearing in anticipation of federal funding that may be available under the transportation legislation under the following programs. Sections 5307, 5309, 5324, 5337, 5339, and 5340 of Title 49, Chapter 53, United States Code. Funds available for transit use under Title I of FAST Act, also known as the highway portion of the legislation, and 49 U.S.C. 5300 of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. The final program of projects will be selected from the list of projects published in the legal notice of this hearing. Applications will be prepared and submitted to USDOT. Projects will be submitted for federal funds under FAST Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure, infrastructure Law as appropriate in an effort to assure receipt of the maximum amount of federal assistance. MTA proposes to A, submit capital projects to request some or all of the Section 5307 funds for federal fiscal year 2021 and federal fiscal year 2022 that will become available. And B, submit some capital projects to request 5307 funds remaining from prior fiscal period allocations and for adjustments to the Section 5307 program. In addition, MTA also proposes to A, Submit projects for federal funds from Section 5337, State of Good Repair Funding category, for federal fiscal year 2021 and federal fiscal year 2022 that will become available. And B, submit additional projects in amounts sufficient to request federal fund balances from prior fiscal year allocations and grants within each of these fund categories, including fund categories under FAST Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law as appropriate and for adjustments to these programs. The capital improvements to be progressed with these funds generally take place in the, with, in the confines of the transportation systems of the MTA or city, county, or state-owned property. Any property acquisition or relocation that may be required for the projects will be carried out in accordance with the appropriate provisions of law and regulatory requirements. The projects are not expected to have any significant adverse environmental impact. 
Should the United States Department of Transportation, USDOT, prepare a formal statement on the environmental impact of any of these projects, the availability of such a statement or statements from DOT will be made known by appropriate publication. The projects outlined in this public hearing conform to the long-range transportation plan for the New York metropolitan region and have been or will be endorsed by the metropolitan planning organizations for the New York metropolitan region, for Orange County, and for Dutchess County as the product of continuing, cooperative, and comprehensive planning for all modes of transportation. Reduced fare privileges for the elderly, disabled, and Medicare users will be made available as required by federal law. All legal requirements relating to the elderly, disabled, and Medicare users will be met. In closing, I would like to emphasize that the financial aid that will be requested is essential to the implementation of MTA's capital program. For today's public meeting, the MTA representatives attending this hearing are here to listen to your comments regarding the proposed list of projects. We will not be responding to any comments today. We are here to listen. As noted earlier, a transcript of this hearing will be distributed to each MTA board member. Thank you. I will now turn it over to our public hearing officer, Sophia LaFrance Brooks, to commence the public speaking session. Thank you, Catherine. We have seven members of the public registered to speak today. Please note that each speaker is limited to three minutes. We ask that each speaker keeps their remarks to the three minute time frame out of respect for all other speakers. As a reminder, we ask that all public speakers attending virtually or in person adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. If you have joined the Zoom under a name that is different from the one you used when you signed up to speak, Please identify yourself in the Q&A function with the name you used when you signed up. For our virtual attendees, when you are called on to speak, there will be a brief transition on your screen. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled before beginning your remarks. You will not be able to unmute or enable your camera until it is turned on to speak. Please remain patient until then. In the event you miss your name being called, we will call the list one more time after all speakers in attendance have been called first. By attending this virtual webinar, you are consenting to be recorded. Please be aware that there will be an auditory and visual cue to remind you that you have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. Thank you for your patience and understanding throughout the public comment session. The next speaker is Council Member Sahana Hanif. Good evening. Hi, everyone. I'm Council Member Shahana Hanif. Thank you to the Metropolitan Transit Authority, MTA, for holding this critical hearing and giving me the opportunity to speak. I want to raise two capital project issues that are of the utmost priority to me and my constituents. The first is elevators. Because of the MTA's failure to make more than three quarters of their subway stations ADA accessible, the entire subway system is functionally unusable for many New Yorkers with disabilities. As a lupus survivor with their third hip replacement on the horizon, I know this reality firsthand. At times, I've had to rely exclusively on buses for public transportation because I could not utilize the vast majority of subway stations in our city. These conditions are unacceptable for a modern American city. In the immediate term, the MTA must comply with the timelines laid out on its previous capital programs and make 50% of stations 80 accessible by 2029. In the longer term, I'm in solidarity with disability justice advocates and remain steadfast in our demand for an elevator in every station. Further, we need to improve maintenance and cleanliness of these elevators to ensure their usability. These infrastructural projects must happen simultaneously with enhancements to the accessor ride system, including making the on-demand pilot a permanent citywide program. The second critical project is platform screen doors. The MTA has studied this issue for more than a decade. It is time to stop stalling and take immediate action now. 
The tragic death of Michelle Alyssa Go makes the urgency of this project all too clear. We've seen these doors work in other cities and here in New York in the JFK air train. We know that these doors improve service by reducing the amount of trash that reaches the rails um, and subsequently the amount of track fires. But more importantly, they save lives. The MTA must immediately begin work on this project in stations that need the least amount of retrofitting to accommodate doors. The influx of federal funding must be dedicated to these two projects. But let's be clear, all the funding in the world will not mean anything unless it is utilized effectively. There is no reason New York City should be spending three to 10 times more the amount that comparable cities worldwide spend on capital construction. The MTA must get its operational costs under control to complete these ambitious projects successfully. I look forward to working with the agency to make these projects a reality. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. The next speaker is Mr. X, followed by Nicholas Elizabeth Fabi. It's good you started this public hearing at 6 p.m. In the past, I stated these public hearings should start at or after 6 p.m. And I guess someone finally listened, but I think it's sad that all the volunteers, okay, board members, including the head, are absent. They should be here. I stated this before, they need to attend public hearings and board meetings, public hearings in addition to board meetings regularly, unless they have other commitments. Regarding projects, uh, there are some you left omitted from that book, Courtry Station. You need to reopen that platform and redesignate for local trains. Local trains use all times. Those vintage subway train cars could be placed at a tour since you're inside the building. Same because there are delays on the IND Fulton Street line between J Street and Lafayette Avenue. And unless until you open, reopen the Corsi Station platform, you'll continue having delays. Also, Horse Street, you need to reopen the unused platforms or tracks. Let local trains operate or start start Court Street and run to the Queens terminals like the express trains terminate Eucal Avenue because as you know the portions below it are, were built primarily for local service. Okay. Franklin Avenue line. You can dismiss Park Place Station, thus enlarge Botanic Garden and Franklin Avenue stations to the point where they can accommodate ten car length. Also on that line, you need to rebuild the downtown track above Botanic Garden Station. Okay, when you need you need to rebuild it and look that that's a death trap. You don't rebuild it, some and that track catches fire, you're stuck. Regardless of your prey, you're stuck. So you need to consider that. Also, BMTC Beach Line. Between 8th Avenue and 86th Street, you need to re rebuild the downtown express track, the downtown or, uh, or uptown express track. One of those tracks was seven and two spots and merged with the other. There were there are four tracks along that corner, not three. So you need to rebuild it. Okay, and also you can store trains uh, on those tracks during night rush hours. And there's something else you need to do. You need to dismiss that track bed that holds the fire train between 130 and 149 streets. Simply because it, the last the 56 years alone, it was normal unused during nighttime hours, and it forces trains to crawl like babies. Okay, also causes delays. You don't need it, dismiss it. Okay? Please conclude your remarks. Well, I, I'm concluding, but unfortunately, I, I don't want to give you this. I'd rather give you a type testimony. It's just common sense. Thank you. The next speaker is Nicholas Elizabeth Farber, followed by Kyle Weber. Hello. I am Hello. I am Nicholas Elizabeth Faby. I'm here as a disabled New Yorker. The only reason I was able to physically attend today is my friend Kyle Weber was able to help me go up and down the stairs in the subway station near our house and connecting here. 
uh, this is not acceptable. As a council member said, it's not acceptable for a modern city to have three quarters of its subway stations inaccessible to disabled people. 7% uh, of New Yorkers have some kind of mobility related disability. We deserve to have the same access to subway stations as everyone else. Um, maintaining the elevators, making sure they're um, replaced if needed and making sure all the stations are ADA compliant and making sure all the services are ADA compliant needs to be the top priority uh, when spending this federal money. Um, we deserve to have the same access as everyone else. Um, I have missed doctor's appointments because I was having a day where Kyle could not help me to walk up and down the stairs uh, when, and my symptoms were severe enough that I needed to use my wheelchair, but the station near my house is not compliant and the station near the doctor's office was not compliant. Um, an access ride is not dependable enough, as you probably know. It will just not show up, or they already have the 30-minute window, but they show up after the 30-minute window. So even if you know ahead of time you're going to need it, and you schedule the day in advance the way you have to, you cannot depend on it for something like a doctor's appointment. I should just be able to take the subway and depend on that like everyone else, and so should all physically disabled New Yorkers. It, it, it's, it also affects people who are parents of young children. Uh, you may have heard of the cases of parents dying trying to get down the stairs uh, and their children being injured. So it affects people at all, all around the age spectrum from children um, to young adults like me. And then of course, most people will have some degree of mobility related disability as they get older. Um, to be frank, most of you are probably going to have a mobility related disability if you are fortunate to live long enough. It is in your own best interest to make sure these stations are ADA accessible. Um, thank Please you. Please close. Thank you. The next speaker is Kyle Weber, followed by Joseph Morales. So uh, my friend and the council member already spoke very eloquently about the challenges that disabled New Yorkers face accessing the New York transit system. So I'm going to try to be very brief. I think that the strength of a commitment is about sort of what you're willing to give up to meet it. And so I urge uh, the members of this council and the MTA more broadly, even as there are projects that are being considered that have great value, including projects that would improve the aesthetic appearance of stations or, or uh, assist in the improvement of uh, bus service or expand the reach of what can be reached from Penn Station. Those are all valuable projects. But I want to underscore that uh, accessibility is not sort of optional. And it's essentially something that the city needs to provide for its most vulnerable citizens at all sort of uh, points in the income spectrum, at the age spectrum, and so on. I mean, the analogy I'd, I'd like to give is uh, when we look at the Penn Station uh, project, which I think independent of the other needs of the MTA is a valuable one, there's no world in which we would go to the residents of Staten Island or Queens or Brooklyn and say, unfortunately, we're going to have to do track maintenance to expand um, the new service to Penn Station. So we're going to just shut off half of the stations in your city for the next few years while we work on that. While the project is valuable, we understand that uh, keeping service going and providing service for the residents of those boroughs needs to take priority, even if it means the project is delayed. The reality for disabled New Yorkers is like the situation that I just imagined for residents of Queen, Queens or Brooklyn or other boroughs. They're not able to access the majority of stations. And just like we would not see any non-safety projects as being more urgent than restoring service in the event that half the stations were sort of thrown off and, and had to close, we should see the fact that disabled New Yorkers can access half the, the majority of stations as a similar crisis and use it as an opportunity to focus on on outside of the ones which are required for public safety, focus on accessible capital projects as the next priority. I relinquish the remainder of my time. Appreciate the attention. Thank you.
The next speaker is Joseph Morales, followed by Abraham Cruz. Um, can you please tell me when I can begin? I can begin? Sure. Whenever you start. <sighs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Joseph Morales, and I'm a sophomore at Bronx Engineering and Technology Academy in the Bronx. And I came here today to speak on a few issues um, regarding the capital projects that have been proposed for the MTA to receive federal grants on. The first is is electric buses, and I want to specifically talk about the equity of electric bus distribution because in 2018, when electric buses were first piloted in New York City, three routes were chosen for the first pilot. The B32, which runs between Williamsburg and Long Island City, as well as the M42 and M50 cross towns in Midtown. B bus routes that were not part of the pilot were bus routes in areas like Br Mott Haven in the Bronx and Brownsville in Brooklyn. These are communities that have asthma rates that are double and triple the citywide average that would really need fuel efficient vehicles as a lot of these problems are stemmed from roadway pollution and these communities are also disproportionately impacted by the digital divide in which 16% of New Yorkers can, do not have broadband internet access. And these buses have Wi-Fi, which could be really useful for these residents. There's no reason that in 2019, older diesel burning buses were 4% of the New York City bus fleet, and yet 20% of the buses in the East New York and Flatbush bus, bus depots were of the older diesel burning variety when these are the communities that cannot that need the electric buses, let alone the oldest buses in the fleet. And the, the problem only changed after strong community advocacy from the community, as well as Bur Brooklyn Borough former Brooklyn Borough President and now Mayor Eric Adams. When we purchase millions, almost $700 million worth of electric buses, it is important that these buses are distributed equitably and in communities of need. And the second issue I would like to comment on um, am I screaming? Okay. The second issue I would like to comment on is maintenance of stations. There's $469.3 million allocated towards station work. There was no specification as which stations would be prioritized for the work as some stations really need it. Like, for example, certain Staten Island Railway stations, five of them don't even have, an, have certain entrances without sidewalks. Even more entrances have roads where the station is on one side of the overpass and you have to cross the street to get to the station of a busy roadway, but there's no crosswalk. These stations also don't have help points, metro car vending machines, and other features that the New York City subway has, and that must be fixed. So I hope that these stations are, the Staten Island Railway is prioritized for station work. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Abraham Cruz, followed by Juan Castillo. Alrighty. Uh, hello, my name is Abraham Cruz. First of all, I'd like to thank the MTA for hosting this hearing. Now, I'd like to propose a consideration of an expansion of bus routes between Queens and the Bronx. It's universally understood that transit between the two boroughs is nearly non-existent. There's a total of two bus routes that go through the Bronx and Queens. Both those bus routes cross the Whitestone Bridge. That's one bridge out of three suspension bridges that mostly serve the transit needs of out-of-city New Yorkers, New Jerseyites, etc. Um, it's unacceptable that a borough of about 1.4 million people and another borough of about 2.28 million people right next to each other basically only have bus service between these two bus routes. And again, they're essentially parallel to each other. Um, at the very least, the MTA should consider looking into research of expanding bus routes potentially between Mott Haven and Astoria or another alternative bus route as a whole rather than having uh, Bronx residents and Queens residents have to deviate into Manhattan or take more expensive transit services to be able to get from one borough to another. Also, take into consideration that this could also be done using the Metro North expansion into the Bronx. The rails cross through Queens. It's possible that maybe some station expansion into Queens could be integrated into a project like this. 
in any shape way or form, uh, such a project should be taken into consideration and accessibility for, this partic for these particular projects should be taken into consideration as well. Um, again, the boroughs have a respectively high population and almost no interconnectivity between each other. The MTA should really, really, really consider um, expanding some kind of transportation route between the two boroughs. And I will uh, relinquish the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Juan Castillo. Uh, I'd like to thank the MT for opening this open public hearing. I'd like to propose like an expansion of each sub the subway line, like introducing the second system for IRT, BMT, and IND. I can only produce eight so far. First of all, I want to talk about that the IND Utica Avenue subway, which the line will start out in Manhattan as a branch for three existing IND lines from each station, two of them already existing and one already being worked on, in which they will go into Brooklyn and run down run down Utica Avenue and, and will one day end at Avenue U Kings Plaza or Floor Bennett Field. The next thing I want to talk about is the, the next eight phases of the Second Avenue subway. As you know, the first four only runs with Manhattan. The next eight deals with expand, extending the subway service out into the Bronx. The third, third extension I want to talk about extending the IND concourse line, which serves the B and D past Norwood 205th Street along Burke Avenue to Co-op City, Baychester Avenue, which gives a faster one seat ride that replaces the current bus seat, the bus ride from the BX-28, BX-30, and BX-38, which with the former train ending at Gun Hill Road and the latter ending at two stops east to Co-op City, Baychester Avenue. Fourth project also includes making New tracks on the BMT 4th Avenue line, south of 59th Street, which will have new new uptown tracks built on the right side of the R line, uh, Bay Ridge 90, from 59th Street to Bay Ridge 95th Street. Also, I want to talk about the, the 3rd Avenue subway, BMT, which will be a Brooklyn extension of the 2nd Avenue subway after after Hanover Square, which will eventually run down along 3rd Avenue in Brooklyn, which will eventually pave the way for the Staten Island Railway subway conversion, in which they will merge the Staten Island Railway into the New York City subway by extending both the 3rd and 4th Avenue lines south of 59th Street, branching out, and then using the unfinished Staten Island Tunnel. Also, my, the last two pros deals with the Triborough RX subway or commuter railroad, which uses the current line, that freight line that crosses the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn. And lastly, extending the N and W B and T subway line for, from Ditmars Boulevard to LaGuardia Airport. Thank you. Thank you. We have exhausted our public speaker list and we will go into recess until we have further speakers. Thank you.
Good evening. We are waiting for additional speakers. And when we have additional, we will resume with the public hearing. Thank you.
If there's anyone who hasn't yet spoken but like but would like to comment, please register outside at the registration desk. Thank you.
The public hearing will conclude in five minutes unless additional registered speakers come forward. Thank you. The time is 7 o'clock. This concludes the Capital Project public hearing. Thank you all for joining us.